Good evening. Welcome home to Most Precious Blood Catholic Church. Before our celebration begins, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. Thank you. Father Josh will be presiding over our celebration. Please take a moment of silence in prayer. Please stand and join in our gathering. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Amen. Happy feast day, this glorious day. We celebrate source and summit of our faith, Corpus Christi, the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Great, so grateful for this gift. Just want to welcome everyone. Special welcome. If you're here visiting us for the first time, if you're here visiting us for, from another faith background, we're happy to have you here. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. Take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return? to the Lord for all the good he has done for me. The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the To you will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay, 
in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of all the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Angels who did his bidding. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when, the, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. So today I wanted to do something a little different. Just want to share with you some stories of miracles, approved miracles surrounding the Eucharist. I uh, heard that uh, a couple years before I came here, they had you all had done a pilgrimage to Italy. So some of these Eucharistic miracles that I'm going to mention, you've seen in person. But the first one was. Uh, Blessed Imelda Lambertini, she had a remarkable story. She lived in Bologna, Italy in the 1300s. And she wanted to be a nun from the time she was a little girl. She joined uh, the Dominicans at the age of nine. Uh, they did that back then, okay? And uh, to better prepare herself for the day when she would take the habit. And her greatest desire was to receive Holy Communion. But in those days, you had to be at least 12 in order to be able to receive Holy Communion. So uh, Imelda begged for an exception to the rule. The mean priest refused. Right? She kept praying for special permission. And her prayers were miraculously answered on the Feast of the Ascension in 1333. So this is what was written about it. After Mass, she stayed in her place in the chapel where one of the nuns was putting away the sacred vessels. Suddenly, the nun heard a noise and turned towards Imelda. Hovering in midair in front of Imelda as she knelt in prayer was a sacred host, the Blessed Eucharist, shining with a bright and forceful light. The frightened nun ran to find the priest. By the time the chaplain arrived, the rest of the nuns and the other onlookers had crowded awestruck in the chapel, seeing this floating host. When the priest saw the shining, hovering host, he put on his vestments, went over to the girl, took the miraculous host in his hands, and gave her Holy Communion. Some minutes later, after the crowd had dispersed, the mother superior came over to Imelda to call her for breakfast. She found the girl still kneeling with a smile on her face, but Imelda was dead, actually. Some of you might find this story a little bit disturbing. Um, some of you may find it beautiful. But the way that the nuns interpreted this event was this. She had, di she had died of love, in ecstasy after receiving Christ in the Eucharist. He had longed to be with her, even more than she had longed to be with him. That's how the sisters interpret it. And Blessed Imelda's body is incorrupt. You can still see it today in the church where she is interred in Bologna. She's the patron saint of first holy communicants. That incorrupt should reveal to us that uh, the Lord was doing something there. Even if the circumstances might disturb us a little bit. 
Another famous Eucharistic miracle is that of uh, Lanciano, which is also in Italy. It took place in the year 700. This was a monk who feared he was losing his vocation uh, as he was celebrating the Mass. Um, during the consecration, the host uh, turned into flesh and wine, and the wine turned into blood. So despite the fact that this miracle took place almost 1,300 years ago, you can still see the flesh and the monstrance, which is exposed every day, and the blood and in a glass chalice. And the blood is congealed. It is now like five clots in the glass chalice. In uh, 1971 and in 1981, a hospital laboratory tested the flesh and blood, discovered that the flesh is myocardium, which is muscular, heart muscular tissue. In a sense, you can say that this, this monk who was struggling with his vocation, flesh and blood appears, and, and now like what, what there's actually being revered is the sacred heart of Jesus. It's a sacred heart. The blood is um, a blood group AB. Almost every Eucharistic miracle they test, it's, it's always AB. Uh, 1978, NASA scientists tested the blood on the Turin Shroud, and they discovered its blood group is AD, AB. Uh, the Sudarium, the, the face cloth of Christ uh, in John 26, is also a blood group AB. So that's significant too. Uh, AB, uh, as you uh, remember from biology, it's known as the universal receiver. Because it's the one type of blood that can receive any other type of blood. So Jesus' blood type, he's the universal receiver. Just like O is the universal donor that can be given to anyone, AB is the one that can receive from anyone. Um, today's feast is actually a response to a miracle that took place in 1263. A German priest, Peter of Prague, stopped at Belezna while on pilgrimage to Rome. He is described as being a pious, pious, pious priest, but he found it difficult to believe in transubstantiation, the actual transforming of the, body, of the bread and wine in the body and blood of Christ. And so while celebrating Mass in Belezna, he had barely spoken the words of consecration when blood started to seep from the consecrated hosts and trickle over his hands onto the altar and the corporal the priest was immediately confused. At first, he attempted to hide the blood, but then he interrupted the mass and asked to be taken to the neighboring city of Orvieto. I think some of you actually went there, uh, the city where Pope Urban the, the Fourth was then residing. The Pope listened to the priest's story and gave him absolution for his lack of faith. He then sent emissaries to investigate. When all the facts were ascertained, he ordered uh, the bishop of the diocese to, br um, to bring to Orvieto the host and the linen cloth that had the stains of blood on them. And the relics were then placed in the cathedral and the linen corporal bearing the spots of blood is still there in Orvieto. Pope Urban IV was prompted by this miracle to commission St. Thomas Aquinas to compose liturgical prayers in honor of the Eucharist. So one year after the miracle, in August of 1264, Pope Urban IV introduced the saints' compositions by means of papal bull, and that instituted the Feast of Corpus Christi. So this feast is a response to Eucharistic miracles. And these types of events are rare, but they do happen. I believe miracles are like this are intended to prevent us from taking the Eucharist for granted. That was the original point of this feast, to appreciate this gift that we have. We call the Eucharist the source and summit of our faith. It's the source of our faith, and it's what we're aiming towards. This is our life. This is our church. This is our priests. There's a danger that they warned us about in seminary. Um, you know, they warned us that when we become priests, that... Uh, you, we celebrate Mass every single day. And they said, you know, you guys are going to pick up chalices. And, like, those are literally the tools of your trade. And you're going to, 
If you're not careful, you're going to pick up a chalice in the same way that a carpenter picks up a hammer. And you're going to lose your sense of the sacred because you do these things so often that it can become so ordinary. You all have experienced that, I'm sure, too, uh, sitting in the pews. Remember what that's like. So I'd like to just put it on our hearts today, especially on Corpus Christi, that we not let that happen, that we guard against that. You know, we've all like probably at some point come up with communion, receive communion, and, and we're, we're distracted. We're thinking about something else, and then like, oh my gosh, I didn't even like acknowledge what just happened. Can't let that happen. Um, when we come up for communion, um, you know, we proper way to receive communion is to make a throne with our hands like this. We make a throne. We don't go like this. Why? Because of the chance that when I go to grab it, if the priest puts it right in the middle between my hands when I go to grab it, it could fall. So out of reverence, we make it a throne, and then we, the priest places it here in our hands, and then we go and we receive it. Um, never snatch the Eucharist from the priest's hand. So like when the priest says the body of Christ, never reach up to grab it. Why? Why do we do that? It's out of reverence because the Eucharist is something always received. It's never something taken. Um, we, take a, we receive it. We take a step to the side. And then um, a lot of times people will look at the crucifix, um, but then we can, we can consume it right away. You're supposed to consume it in front of the minister, it says. Um, why is that important? Um, like, I, we've had moments where, um, you know, people, for, sometimes people will actually do bad things with the Eucharist. Um, but it, even people who aren't doing bad things, like, there's times in churches where you'll find a consecrated host, we presume it's consecrated, in a, in a hymnal, lying on the floor, people who don't know what it is. And so um, I actually had this moment when I first became a priest. I think... I, I startled people because, you know, us young priests were zealous. I startled people because I, I was, I think I enforced it more vigorously than other priests had there in the past. Because, uh, you know, if they walked away, I would chase them down, you know. <laughs> and um, and I, had, I got this email that said, uh, it was an email from, from uh, angry parishioners. They said, um, Father, what you did to my wife was incredibly embarrassing. Um, we were humiliated. Never, ever do that to her again. I just wanted to let you know. I called him up. I was like, brother, I am so sorry. I did not at all mean to make you feel that way. I feel horrible about it. Um, but I'm going to do it every single time. <laughs> and he's like, okay, we should probably go to breakfast and talk about it. And I was like, all right, let's go to breakfast and talk about it. I was like, but that's my, that's my job. I gotta, I gotta guard, gotta guard this. Um, we have to maintain that sense of the sacred, or we will, like it will, like what happens here, it will erode, it will erode our faith. And so today's feast is, is really making sure that we always appreciate what what happens here. We really believe that God is present here. This is truly sacred gift that we're we're receiving. Um, he's alive ministering to us, physically present. Uh, there was a, a talk on miracles recently uh, that was given, and um, I witnessed the group. They were talking about it afterwards. Um, you know, powerful miracles, like similar to the ones that I just explained, like where God, you know, does things that just defy our modern sensibilities. And uh, one of the ministers, it was one of the ministers who actually, uh, they were, what do you guys think of the talk? One of the ministers said, well, I found it a little bit, like, unrelatable. And, you know, in my mind, I was like, ah, oh, that's the problem. That's the problem. Because what God calls us to is uh, he wants us to believe in his power. We've got to believe in the Holy Spirit. Like talks like, like the like this need to be relatable. We need to be open to God moving in ways that uh, that we can't 
imagine or conceive. So um, let's worship God well today. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In preparation for the bread of life and cup of salvation, let us call on the name of the Lord in prayer for the needs of our world. For those in our church entrusted with the ministry of presiding at the Eucharist, that they may always be willing to die to self. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, that they work to ensure that people of all religions are free to practice their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish on our feast day, that empowered by the Eucharist, we may humbly commit ourselves as a welcoming community to grow in faith and share Christ's love through our joyful witness and selfless stewardship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are hungry, particularly refugees and those displaced by violence, that God will provide them with food for their bodies and friendship for their spirits. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that this sacrifice of atonement may free them and bring them to glory, especially Terry Meehan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Mass is being offered for the people of the parish. Now we pray for our own private intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you feed us with your body and blood to guide us on our pilgrim way and to strengthen us in holiness. May we return to the Father all that he has given us through you. Let our lives be broken in humble service and poured out in love. May we always be grateful for the gift of the Eucharist in our lives, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race bounded by one world may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look we, look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a couple of announcements. So we will continue with our feast day Eucharistic adoration tomorrow uh, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. So during this time, we'll offer a holy hour of contemplative music from 3 to 4. So, but any time between 1 and 5, come out if you'd like to spend some time with the Blessed Sacrament tomorrow. Um, the Bloodmobile will also be here tomorrow over by the parish office from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So all donors will receive a special gift and a wellness checkup. So please consider donating and sharing the gift of life. Altar server training begins this week. So um, if anyone is interested, you know, we uh, would love to be able to have more people who are trained and ready to go. Uh, like, like tonight, we originally had altar servers, you know, scheduled, but, you know, uh, they weren't able to make it. They, they, they were ill, but if we had more people trained for all the servers, you know, we could have had the bells tonight and everything. That would have been nice. So maybe God is putting it on your heart, young people, to come and serve. So consider it. Tell mom and dad to, to, that you want to do that, right? But it begins this week. So anyone interested, please visit the website for our bulletin uh, or our bulletin for more information. This Friday, June 11th, after daily mass, we invite you to join us as we pray a holy hour for vocations to every second Friday. Um, we, right after the day of Mass, we, we offer a, a litany for vocations and we pray the, the luminous mysteries of the rosary. And it's a beautiful morning every time. So, Last chance to register for Vacation Bible School. So grab, grab up to seven of your friends or family and one adult to keep you on track and visit our website to register your crew. So registration closes June 10th. So don't miss out. This was, uh, this announcement, like some people were, you know, they, they, they weren't sure that they wanted to go because like they weren't going to be able to be with their friends. Well, you know, we know that we all have like our social circle. So like it's, we, we don't have to social distance. It's the group that you come with though. If they're people that you already are kind of like commune with and play with, that can be your group for vacation Bible school is what that announcement is getting at there, basically. Um, lastly, uh, some of you are wondering uh, where we're at as far as uh, raising, raising money towards uh, um, our new building, towards the 700000 that uh, we were trying to raise in a month. Um, we're there. We did it. So <laughs> praise God. So thank you so much for your generosity. We've raised uh, 755000 right now that we have in the bank. Um, we have pledged an additional couple hundred thousand, I think 220000 pledged um, throughout the year thus far. And so uh, the total is actually, uh, if, you com if you combine pledged and what we've already received, the total is $975,000 in a month. So it's been amazing. Um, so say a prayer. It's this. It's this Wednesday. Actually, we go before the Diocesan Finance Council. So um, this money was raised basically because this is what the Diocesan Finance Office told us. Look, this is what you guys really need to raise to be able to say you can afford this. You know, and it also shows um, the parish support of it. Um, but we're not we're not done yet. So now we go before the Diocesan Finance Council. So. Um, keep that in prayer, right, as we, we present our plan, but um, I'm just, I'm going to be really proud to share everything that uh, this parish has done this past month and how excited we all are, so thank you all so much for your generosity, and uh, let's pray that we can continue this process towards getting, getting ready to build, okay, so thank you all so much. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. <laughs>